How are you today? Yeah, I'm Already, already. Well, hey, you ain't gotta be nervous. We gonna we gonna make you feel real comfortable here and go to talk ENT. So with that being said, uh explain to them what it is that you do to the viewers. I am a singer and songwriter. I work for a major label and I do ghostwriting and decent tribute. So from rap to country music to R and B to rock music. Oh, so you you write all those types of music, man. That that that's talent there. That's talented there. So, what made you you know first start pursuing writing music? I grew up in music. My mm -hmm. family does gospel music. So sitting around at the piano, uh, beating at the table, and writing songs and stuff was something that was regular. You know what I mean? It was really a playful thing at first, but then I my parents realized I really could sing. And from there, my dad put me in vocal lessons, and he taught me how to play the piano because he plays. My dad sings as well. He all, he always written songs. He never performed, but songwriting was always his thing. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. So with that being said, like, when when did you know, like, when you, when you first started singing, like, what made you know you could sing? I was in church, and I know it is cliche for the singer to be like, I was in church when I learned, when I realized I could sing. But that's what it was. It was a moment where the pastor called me up and handed me the mic. And I opened my mouth, and I opened my mouth and knew what I was doing. Great, I was a kid, I was only like four. But you can, you know what I mean? They honed it from there, and I've been doing it ever since. Okay, okay. Well, with that being said, though, so you started out in the church, basically. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what, you was the lead singer? I praise and worship, choir, kids choir, adult choir, any choir you could put me on, all of it. That's what's up, that's what's up. So what it is, that, like, what, what type of music do you sing, though? I know you say you write, write a lot of uh, different stuff, but what do you actually sing? I sing R&B music. As an artist, I'm an R&B singer. R&B, neo soul is definitely my vocal language, and um, it's my comfort, actually, it's my... That's my lane of release. It's really, it's relaxing to write R&B music. And it's from the heart, you know? Yeah. A lot of times people don't write music from the heart, but I love doing R&B music because it's, it be what's on my mind. And what I don't want to say to people, I put it in music. Yeah, I got you. So with that being said, like what, what city and state is you coming from? I am coming from PA. I'm coming from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Moved to Spartanburg. I've been here about three years now. Got you. So, do you like the transition from Philly down here? It's okay. It's not a bad transition at all. It's, it's a lot slower than being in the city, mm -hmm. but it did what I needed it to. You know what I mean? To to ground the foundation for my business and music career, it definitely did that. It slowed me down enough to build a solid foundation for that. Okay. So, would you say being down here made your opportunity more better as far as your music? Will. I will. It gave me the benefit of being able to slow down and really handle business properly. In the city, everything is fast. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of fast talk. There's a lot of fast stuff going on. So you jump into whatever's moving faster. Being here gave me a chance to sit back and not only learn business at a different pace, but be business at a different pace. And I like it. Definitely. Definitely. So with that being said, like, you know, like, who, who was that inspiration to you growing up? Like singing. Um, if you know me, you know I'm a big Beyonce fan. <laughs> but um, Beyonce, Jasmine Sullivan, Mary J. Blige, Faith Evans, um, Karen Clark Shear, Kimberell. I love a lot of them. I'm real old school when it comes to music as well. So like Anita Baker, Ella Fitzgerald. I get deep in the music and I go into studying. Okay, so with that being said, saying those names that you said, I'm going to assume that you're an 80s baby. No, I'm a 90s baby. What? Yes. Man, so, yeah, so you really did come I'm, from a music family. I'm a 90s baby, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, with that being said, though, like, what do you, what do you see yourself going with the R&B thing in the next few years? Um, Right now, everything is taking off and moving fast. Mm -hmm. um, we've been doing a lot of work in Jamaica. Um, I'm flying out to London soon. So, I'm looking forward to seeing it blossom, to be bigger than what it is. You know what I mean? Because right now, on the East Coast, it's popping. It's yeah. popping, and it's gaining the momentum it needs. 
episode, I'm looking to taking over Coke's. You know what I mean? Like Definitely. dropping music in more areas, expanding my demographic. Got you. So with that being said, like how does it feel like when you go to like you you go overseas and perform and stuff? Yeah. So how does that feel? How do they accept you being it's, from the States? It's different. It's mm-hmm. real different because being home is regular life. You know what I mean? I still work a regular job. I still got my kids. I still live in a regular place with everybody else. You know what I mean? My, my day-to-day is like everybody else's. I don't have a whole bunch of money. You know what I mean? I just grind hard. Yeah. And so the difference in the receptance of who I am is is big because there I go overseas and they know me. They don't know my regular life. They just know the artists. Yeah. So I go overseas and it's you're this person and it's a praise and then you're here and it's, it's real regular but I like the regular though it, it keeps me humble you know what I mean it, it reminds me why I grind and definitely what, what pushes me to be a businesswoman beyond the artist definitely so with you being out in these places I'm pretty sure that you don't brush shoulders with some celebrities I have so if you don't mind give us a few of the names that you don't brush shoulders with um Oh, can I say is the question. Um, I'll say I know a lot of people. I know people that work with Vogue. I know people signed to Bad Boy. People signed to Universal. Um, it's a wide span of people. Some of them I cannot name because, again, I am an NDA writer. Mm-hmm. But um, I've met me, of course. I've met p and of course. Um, who else? I have, I met Ross, I have met Two Chains, um, Lil' Kim, and as far as I can think of, those are my favorite meetings. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up, man. Hey, that's major though, man. Like, listen, you doing things a lot of people, hell, you doing people, I mean, you doing things a lot of people don't even never get to do down this way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you living the dream that other people really want to live. Yeah, and it's, it's my dream. You know what I mean? It's Definitely. my dream. And for real, it's making it come to fruition and manifesting it is still a dream for me. You know what I mean? I still don't think I'm where I want to be. And I see the work that I need to do to get where I want to be. And I feel like when, even when I get to where I want to be, it's always going to be something bigger. You know what I mean? More work Definitely. to do. Because everything's an expansion. You know what I mean? Once you get somewhere, you got to learn how to maintain it. Definitely. Okay, so let me ask you this. You know one day you're going to take all the way out to where you're going to have to go independent and you're going to be looking for your own talent. Yeah. So when you become on that level, do you do you want to come down here and try to pursue more artists or are you just going to take, you know, like like applications online and stuff like that from people? I like hands-on work when it comes to that. Um, I've had some experience doing A&R work growing up in the industry mm-hmm. with working for other labels. You know what I mean? And with my own artist management and talent management. So I've had the opportunity to meet a couple artists that I've tucked away for that purpose. You know what I mean? When I get on, I, I see what they could be and I see how they work and their work ethic and their creativity. So it's, it's a, I'd say it's a good five people that I already, I've been watching them work, I've been watching them grow the same way I've been growing and I keep that in mind. I definitely want to have a label, and I, I definitely want a top five. Definitely. I want people to mention my label, and it be like TV. You know what I mean? You got your Kendrick, you got your Drake's. I want it. Gotcha, gotcha. So, with that being said, though, okay, like when when you when you first like, when did you really know that you could sing? Like you had that voice. I was in school. Uh huh. <laughs> my friends, I when it get I. I'll sing anytime. You know what I mean? Like music on, I'm singing. Music not on, I'm singing. I'll sing about your shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll sing about your shoes if I'm in the right mood for real. Yeah. Um, but my friends used to make me sing all mm-hmm. the time. Like they favorite song come on the radio, they turn it off. And I was like, bro, ain't no way y'all think I'm that good for real. Like, chill out. And they used to encourage me. I'm talking about taking me to vocal vocal lessons. Like, you got piano today, your mom, I need to pick you up, your mom come to get you, what you doing? It was when they became, please grab a water and line. Thank you. When um when they became real very supportive of what I wanted to do and the things that they knew I liked and was good at, it made me look like, oh, I gotta be good at this. Cause my best friend like, you gonna go do this? Yeah. Because and you gonna get us rich? <laughs> you yeah. gonna get us rich? You gonna go do this? Cause you good at that, and that could get you some money, and it could get us some money. Yeah. But that's when I realized it. But I I've always loved it though. But when I wanted to do it professionally, it was when my friends were like, we gonna help you do whatever because. 
You're good at this. Mm -hmm. You see other people do this and you can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this now. This this my advice. Hey, you got some great friends. You know what I'm saying? Like the, you know, to take, to take you out, like just like force you to sing piano lessons, all that type of stuff. That's kind of what built your craft. Because you got to think about it. If they wouldn't have been hard on you, not saying that you wouldn't have became who you is today, yeah. but it probably would have took a little longer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I look at it like when they did that, they, they kind of built a resume for you on the low. You know what I'm saying? So they, they definitely, they, I won't say they boosted my ego, but they boosted my ego. You know what I mean? Support, gotcha. A lot of times support is all we need. Uh, you can do it in, in an encouragement. is all somebody needs. It can be simple. I mean, a pat on the back. You don't have to say nothing. Like that right there, Rick. Right? Mm -hmm. And it would change somebody like real quick. You know what I mean? Like, you know what? You said I could do this. Let me see what I can make this story. Gotcha. Okay, so let me ask you this then. Like, when you was a child, you know what I'm saying? Like, matter of fact, yeah, from a child on up, like, what was life like before the music? Like, I know you say you still re live a regular life, but it was real regular before the music. Yeah. So, like, how was it before that, though? Um, life was good. I never really lived a bad life. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't really come from poverty at all. You know what I mean? Like, granted, I had middle class parents that worked real good jobs and they did what they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, so life really didn't too much, too much change for me. It gave me the means to ex expand my horizons, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? To travel more and to to grow as a person in in cultural in societal logic. Yeah, definitely. It definitely opened me up to being to to being modest and and holding on to humility. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. integrity, to be honest. Definitely, man. Good answer. Good answer. So, like, you know, what? Like, what's the name of your? Like, you got an album or something out? Like, I do not have an album. We are working on the album. It's called Everybody Hates Monday, and I really hope I stick with the title. Right now, we've been sticking with that for the last year. But I've been working on my album for the last year. I um. After maternity leave, after I came out of maternity leave, I went straight back into the studio. I have, um, so far, I have pop records, R&B records. Um, I have some country records for this album. Um, some hip hop records. I have something with um, Brooklyn, Brooklyn and Doll. If anybody knows, um, knows who they are. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, Playboy. Playboy Cardi. No, not Playboy. Oh. <laughs> not Playboy Cardi. Now, that would be a nice, that would be yeah. a, not, a, definitely a nice feature. I would, I would like that one. I definitely would like that one. Definitely. Um, he's a dope artist. I like his, I like the way he's created visually, too. Mm hmm Um, but no, um, these are actually South Carolina artists that I'm Oh, okay, with. okay. Um, um, yeah. Um, Brooklyn Nadal is from here. Um, Playboy is from here. I, um, ATM Prestige, he's from here. Um, and he's very dope, very dope. He's probably one of my favorite rappers from here. I think I know who you're talking about. HG, definitely dope. Mm -hmm. And he's from here. I've worked with all of them or some some way met them in passing through music. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to throw a name out there for you. Like, this person right here, he's a versatile rapper. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of talent down here in Spartanburg, in South Carolina, period. Mm -hmm. But... Just, just listen to this guy right here, Jimmy Lee, man. I don't know if you ever heard of Jimmy Lee, but he raps like okay. this guy right here. He's he's like a, a he's like the big son of Spumbird or, or the uh, he's like a see I like big son yeah he like a big son Drake type rapper uh okay. J Cole okay. you know what I'm saying I like all of them as songwriters too for real yeah so I I had to check him out first. okay okay yeah so with that being said though you know like have you ever did a show like 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 a show by yourself or was your show was always featured? Um, a lot of my shows were featured. Like uh -huh. it was um like I was one of the headline headlining artists. But other than that, like I wasn't the only one performing. It wasn't just my show. Now I got some stuff in the works for Calabo and the Blues Boulevard Jazz and Bar. So I'll be performing live a little more often in the future. You talking about this coming up, uh yeah. in Greenville? No, here. Here in Spartanburg. I'll be downtown Spartanburg. I will be at the the Freight Yard, Blues, um, cigars. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Blues Boulevard, Jazz and Cigars, and I will be here at Calabo. So what day they can look to see you there now? Not yet. We, we're still just um, discussing dates. Still discussing okay. dates and, and set time. So once we get all of that established, I'll definitely be keeping people updated on my social media. Okay, I'm glad you said that because that was going to be the next question. 
where can they find you at and follow you, you know, to, to keep up with your music, your shows, and all that? Um, you can find me at, on Facebook at, you can find me on Facebook at Yaya Vulgaris. You can find me on Instagram at Yaya.Vulgaris. And you can find me on TikTok at Yami03967. Okay, okay. That's good, that's good. With that being said, though, you know, we're going to conclude this part of the interview. And we're going to jump right into the next part, okay. if you don't mind. Okay. All right.